Poltergeist for her. No. <laughs> I didn't take that one, I'm afraid. Next time, baby. <laughs> uh, just a bit a brief look at the life, times, and music of Maestro Ken Thorpe. Kenneth Reginald Thorne was born 26th of January 1924 in East Deerham, a small town nestled in the county of Norfolk. An older brother, Victor George Thorne, had been born August the 20th, 1921. His father's name was Egbert Harold Thorne. He worked uh, 12 hour days, seven days a week during the war, and he was either in bed when I was up or he was getting up when I went to bed. He was a man of habit, meals precisely at the same time, voracious appetite. He would actually wake up to have dinner and then go back to sleep. There was a lot of humor in the house, you know, particularly when we had visitors, when he would be his other self. I don't really have a painful memory of him. He died in hospital. And the last thing he said to me, this is a mug's game. He had no patience with it. I think he was quite happy when he pegged up. His mother's name was Gertrude Fitzherbert Bennett. Oh, we've had such fun. Uh, simple, simple things. I, I think a commonality of uh, humor, the whole world of that. We had so much in common. I mean, I was brought up on it. It was part of me. She was all, she was all over us, you know, with that tremendous personality she had. We boys, she had tremendous influence. The old man had no influence at all. I mean, she, was, she and I were together until I left to get into the jazz business. Um, and then every time anything went wrong, I would go home, take the so uh, soiled washing with me, say, could you fix this for me, mum? And um, it's okay if I spend the night. You no, know, she was like that rock that you go back to whenever you're in trouble. Ken had taken up the piano at an early age and began his musical career as a professional pianist with the big bands of England during the 1940s, playing at nightclubs and dance halls. He especially appreciated playing at the Windmill Theatre in Soho, London. For obvious reasons. In 1948, aged 24, Ken wrote his first film score for the short feature, The Clouded Crystal. Although he was a neophyte in the field, it would be another 13 years before he received another credit in this area. The 50s brought work at the BBC in the form of The Goon Show, working with composer-conductor Wally Stott. Men, men, falling to bits. She's a loose woman, you know. It was here that Ken met director Dick Lester. During these years, Ken developed and pursued many of his passionate interests. Among them, sailing, ham radio, chess, and fine cognac. He became proficient on all fronts. In 1951, at age 27, Ken decided to take a sabbatical for five years and seriously study composition with private tutors. In London and Cambridge, he studied the organ. 
In 1959, Ken started what was to become a long association with director Dick Lester. He helped Lester with the score of the Running, Jumping, Standing Still film. In 1962, Dick Lester directed his first feature film, It's Trad Dad, a musical comedy. He took Ken on as composer and arranger. But Ken's real breakthrough came four years later, as a result of the ill feeling that had arisen between Lester and Beatles producer George Martin during the making of A Hard Day's Night. The two had clashed in terms of musical sensibilities during production, and Lester chose Ken to compose a portion of the score which consisted of rearrangements and adaptations of tunes by the Beatles. It also ended up getting Ken unexpected exposure in America where he was nominated for a Grammy Award, Best Original Score shared with John, Paul, and George. Dick Lester regarded Ken as his composer of choice across the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And for a time in the 70s, John Barry used him as his orchestrator and arranger on many of his film scores. During the 60s, when the marketplace for dance records was booming, Ken formed the Ken Thorne Orchestra. As a conductor, he released pop instrumental and easy listening recordings for Reader's Digest. Hear me sigh. Then in 1966, Ken was nominated. The nominees for best scoring of music, adaptation, or treatment are Ken Thorne for A Funny Thing Happened All the Way to the Forum, Luis Enrique Bacalo for The Gospel According to St. Matthew, Elmer Bernstein for Return of the Seven, Harry Soupman for The Singing Nun. The winner, please. Ken Thorne for A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. Mr. Don Black will accept the award for Ken Thorne. On behalf of Ken Thorne, I'd like to say thank you very much to all the members of the Academy. Thank you. Lester and Ken's collaboration followed on with How I Won the War, starring John Lennon. After that, Ken became a highly regarded conductor, composer, arranger and orchestrator working on major feature films on both sides of the Atlantic.
1972, whilst arranging songs and conducting for singer Andy Williams, the biggest stroke of luck befell Ken. He met and fell in love with a beautiful young woman, Linda Hayes. They married on the 23rd of March, 1973. The 70s also proved to be another productive decade, and much to Ken's surprise, in October 1974, daughter Jenny appeared under a gooseberry bush. Again, much to Ken's astonishment, in August 1978, twins Emily and Claire miraculously appeared under the same gooseberry bush. In 1978, Ken started a lifetime friendship and collaboration with director Kevin Connor, which encompassed some 15 films, the first of which was Arabian Adventure. In the late 70s, Ken and Linda moved to Los Angeles. Ken was hired again by Dick Lester for the sequels Superman 2 and 3, for which Ken was nominated by the Academy for Best Music. He recomposed the music of John Williams and added considerable incidental arrangements. In the 1980s, Ken mainly focused his work on big television miniseries and films, but still maintained a relationship with feature directors. In 1982, he was nominated for Best Music by the Academy of Science Fiction, Fantasy and Horror Films for The House Where Evil Dwells.
In the 90s, Ken produced wonderful and soaring scores for several more high-profile miniseries. smugglers and we've, uh, we're coming now west along the north coast on the face here. That's Cavern Point that we've just passed there and we're coming up to Potato Bay and we're making our way right across this very, very big bay to Prisoners, Prisoners Harbour. In 1995, Ken was nominated for Outstanding Individual Achievement in Music and Lyrics for For a Love Like You from the film A Season of Hope.
freedom!
Ken Thorne was a film composer in the truest sense of the word. He composed to the cuts, the dialogue, and the essence of the film, a true art that is sadly diminishing today. He was a great friend and bon vivant to so many. We will all miss his wit, charm, humor, and above all, his talent. I looked out and I thought, oh my God, we're adrift. That handsome devil. Hmm? <laughs> Look at that. Our present for Emily Claire. <laughs> a good present. It's a good present. <laughs> Best yeah. thing I ever did. What? Well, friends. Marry you. Yeah. Find you. Meet you. Oh. This long black hair. 